Today we're going to look at a nice classic type of problem. We're going to find the last two digits of 1997 to the power 1998 to the power 1999. And our main tool here will be Euler's theorem, sometimes called Euler's generalization of Fermat's theorem. And it says that if A and N are co-prime, in other words, their GCD is one, then A to the power phi of N is congruent to one mod N. And phi of N is, well, it's the number of numbers between one and N that are relatively prime to N. So I've written that like this set notation down here. Okay, so well, what is that telling us here? Well, that means that we need to reduce the base mod 100. Well, why 100? Because, well, we're looking for the last two digits. And that's the same thing as dividing by 100 and keeping the remainder. In other words, reducing mod 100. And then we'll reduce this first exponent mod phi of 100. And, well, how do we calculate phi of 100? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. And that's because the prime factors of 100 are only 2 and 5. So we just have to list the numbers that are not divisible by 2 or 5. So here we've got 1, 3, 7, 9, 11, 13, 17, 19, so on and so forth, all the way up to 91, 93, 97, and 99. So because divisible by 2 means ends in an even number, and this divisible by 5 means ends in 0 or 5, it's really easy to make this list. And furthermore, we can count these up in chunks. Notice we've got four numbers here that start with 0, four numbers here that start with 1, so on and so forth, up to four numbers here that start with 9. So that means in the end, we have 10 groups of four numbers, meaning that we have phi of 100 is equal to 40. So that means we're going to reduce this number 1998 modulo 40. And then, well, now we need to know phi of 40 because that's how we'll reduce this number 1999. But that's also straightforward because it has the same prime factors as 100. So we've got 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. And we can actually list them all out here pretty easily. So let's do that. The last grouping would be 31, 33, 37, and 39. But counting all of those up, we see that that's equal to 16. So, well, like I said, that means we're going to reduce this biggest exponent, mod 16, this number right here, this middle exponent, mod 40, and then this base here, mod 100. So in other words, we're going to have 1997 to the 1998 to the 1999 is congruent to 97 to the power, let's see, that's going to be 38 because we're reducing... 1998 mod 40, and let's see, that's going to be 38 more than 1960. And you can easily calculate 1999 to be 15 modulo 16. So that means that's our initial maybe reduction here. Okay, and now, now let's look at what's going in that exponent, in that 38 to the power 15. Notice that we're reducing that mod 40. So we have 38 to the 15. I can write that as negative 2 to the 15 modulo 40. That's because 38 is pretty clearly equal to negative 2 mod 40. But observe that that is going to be negative 2 to the power 15 mod 40. And that's because we've got an uh, odd power of a negative number. But now 2 to the 15 is equal to, let's see, 2 to the 5 to the third power mod 40. Now, why did I do 2 to the 5? Well, that's going to get me to 32. And 32 is 8 less than 40, so I can write it as negative 8. So I've got that this is negative, negative 8 cubed modulo 40. But now... That negative sign inside of the cube can be brought out and cancel the minus sign that we've already got. 
leaving us with what? 8 cubed mod 40. So we've got 8 cubed modulo 40. But now it's pretty straightforward to check that 8 cubed is in fact equal to 32 mod 40. So this is congruent to 32 modulo 40. Okay, cool. So that means that we can replace this 38 to the 15 with simply 32. And you might be worried here that we're not always satisfying the, this condition that the GCD of A and N is equal to one. But in these cases, it doesn't matter so much because we're never gonna enter this position where we end up with a zero mod N by raising the base to a certain power. And that really means we're only worried about whatever loop we're creating in the repeated exponentiation. And that loop, even if we don't arrive at one, will always have a length, if you will, that divides phi of n. So needless to say, it all works out here. Okay, so that being said, let's maybe jump to the point that we've calculated so far, which is, we need to now calculate 97 to the power 32 mod 100. All right, so this is where we left everything off. The last two digits will be congruent to 97 to the 32 mod 100. But now I'm gonna use the trick that we did before using negative residues mod 100 in this case. So 97 is the same thing as negative three mod 100, so I might as well replace 97 with negative three and then that's raised to the 32. But in the end, the minus sign cancels out and we have three to the 32 mod 100. And now, since 32 is a power of two, we can use the method of repeated squaring and that allows us to maybe finish this calculation off with five steps. And that's because 32 is two to the fifth, like we just said, okay. So we're gonna start with three, so we'll square it. So we'll say that this arrow means that we're gonna square each step. So that's gonna give us three squared, which is equal to nine, but it's also congruent to nine mod 100. And now we're gonna square that. That's gonna give us three to the fourth, which is congruent to 81, which is congruent to minus 19 mod 100. I'm putting it as minus 19 because it's a little easier to square 19 than it is 81. Now here we'll square this again to get three to the eighth power. So you can square 19 and you'll see that you get, so you can square 19 and you'll see that you get 361, but you can calculate 361 as minus 39 mod 100, that's a little bit easier to work with. And then if we square that, we're gonna get, well, it's gonna be what three to the 16 is because, well, I left off that this is the same thing as three to the eight. And squaring 39 gives us 1521. So this is congruent to 1521, which in turn is congruent to 21 mod 100. And then we can square 21 and we'll get three to the 32, which is congruent to 441, which is congruent to 41 mod 100. But that finishes everything off. So in the end, we've seen that our original number is congruent to 41 modulo 100, which answers this question. What are the last two digits? The last two digits are 41, and that's a good place to stop.